What's up, my soldiers? It's Wobbly Honor. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about the layout of the dorms at BMT. At BMT, there's several different designs, and there's also the new dorms. So your dorm may not actually look like the one I'm about to show you. Although your dorm may not look like this, they all pretty much have the same rooms. They'll have two bays, which is A bay, B bay, and then you have the MTI room, the utility closet, the bathroom, or well, they call it the latrine. And then you have a day room, and then you have a second closet. Now, this hallway that's flashing in red, that's the main hallway. On the left, that's the first door that you walk in from. This circle that's flashing red, that's going to be your EC monitor stand. Now, if you don't know what an EC monitor is, you can watch my video on EC monitor. Basically, EC monitors are two people who are assigned from the flight every day for two hours, and they basically guard the door and they make sure people who come in and out are supposed to be in the dorms. The next room is the utility closet. Now, each flight is going to have two utility monitors, and basically their job is to maintain the utility closet, and they pass out like cleaning supplies and like cloths for when you do dust down. Dust downs is when you dust down all the lockers and all the beds and all the floors every day. They maintain all the cleaning supplies for the latrine and all that stuff. Um, there's a certain way that you gotta have everything set up in there, so that's what the utility monitor does. It just makes sure everything's right. I believe the utility monitor also cleans the main hall, but I'm not sure. Next, you have your A bay. A bay is where the dorm chief, the first element leader, and the second element leader sleep. Also, whoever else is assigned to A bay. A bay has half of the flight, and then B bay has the other half. They're separated by a wall in between, and there's a small opening in the back where you can cross between bays. Now, the small boxes around the perimeter of A bay, those represent your wall lockers. Each bunk has their own wall locker, and in between each wall locker are two chairs for each person in the flight to sit down in. Usually, you sit down only when you're like clipping strings off your uniforms or working on your clothes. Every day, it's the bed aligner and the shoe aligner responsibility to make sure all the beds are straight and aligned. Next is B bay. The same thing applies with B bay. The small squares around the perimeter of the room represent the wall lockers. It should be noted that each bed is in opposite directions. So everybody lays in opposite directions so that way nobody really gets sick as fast. Because when you're asleep you cough and stuff and that you don't want that to go straight into the person next to you. Bunk number 31 is going to be your third element leader and bunk number 59 is going to be your fourth. Bunk number 60 is going to be your EC monitor's bed. Why does EC monitor sit there? I don't know. Now in between both bays is your MTI's office. Usually you don't go in there unless you need to talk to your MTI about something. Here's a pro tip, never have to see your MTI about something. And if you ever go in there, you need to take a trainee with you so you have a wingman. If you're a dorm chief or an element leader, you're gonna be in here all the time. At some point in BMT, you're probably gonna go in there. Just make sure you uh, knock first and you just have a trainee with you. It's not that serious. Next is the latrine. Now BMT, you don't call it a bathroom, you don't call it a restroom. You don't call anything else but a latrine. Once you get out of BMT, you can call it whatever you want to. Our latrine had like three urinals, which we never used because the urinals didn't flush that well. And whenever we had inspections, we would fail them because there would be stuff in there. So after like the second week, we stopped using them. Our latrine also had like five or six stalls, which were usually packed after like meals because everybody would rush in there. If you ever need to use the latrine, you pretty much just get up and go. You never really have to ask. And then there's maybe like 10 sinks around the edge of the latrine. Um, whenever you have to fill up your canteen, you have to use the sinks. There's no water fountains in the old dorms. In the new dorms, they have water fountains though. A special note about the latrine is whenever you're taking showers, you have to close the window on the front door of your dorm. And anytime somebody knocks on the door when you're taking showers, you have to say clear the hall, secure the latrine. That basically means everybody get the heck up out of the main hallway because somebody's at the door. And if it's a female, then we don't want her to see nothing, right? So the EC monitor is going to shut the door, make sure it's shut, and then the other EC monitor is going to open up the door and see who it is. That's just a special note that most people probably don't know. Now in the latrine, there was like an open archway that led into like a drying area with a couple benches. And then there was like hooks on the wall for your towel. And then there was another open area with like 10 shower heads maybe. Next is the day room. The day room is basically where you spend all your airmen's time and some of your training. Your MTI has a desk and there's like a few couches around the edge of the room. Don't use the couches. Those couches aren't for you until you start wearing your blues and like your last week of training. You're going to sit on the floor and you're just basically going to listen to whatever the MTI is going to be talking about. There's a day room crew, which is actually a job at BMT and there's usually like five or six people who will go in the day room every day and they'll clean it, they'll mop it, sweep it, whatever. And then finally there's like a little random closet off to the side. After like your first three days of BMT you're going to put up all your civilian clothes and you're going to put them in your bag. You're going to fill out this little tag and you put it on your bag and then you're going to put it in the closet. The closet gets locked so any laptops or anything that you have gets locked in there. All your cell phones and stuff get taken down to CQ so you can't even see those anymore. And then all your stuff pretty much just stays in there until you graduate. Finally, one thing I didn't mention was the fire exit. Whenever you're doing fire drills or like bomb drills and stuff like that, you're going to take your fire exit and you're going to go to whatever designated location it is outside. So just be aware that you're going to be having fire drills and stuff like that. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the layout of most dorms. I mean, it changes like the shape of the rooms and everything, but everything's pretty much the same. Like all the rooms are the same. Now there's new dorms at BMT, like multi-million dollar 
dollar dorms that have like water fountains and all this new stuff so their rooms are probably gonna be a little different i can't tell you guys what that was like because i wasn't in the new dorms when i was there thank you guys for watching hope you guys picked up some valuable information see you guys next time peace to mention about the chrome strips this is one of the things that are like most memorable about bmt if you say don't step on the chrome to anybody in the air force they're gonna know what you're talking about basically if you could imagine like an archway into the a bay and the b bay along the bottom of the floor is gonna be this long chrome strip now this is very important because you cannot have any scuffs any marks any dirt any like scratches or anything on that chrome it has to be perfect every single day all the time and so of course, like the new trainees who are coming in, they're just stepping on it, they don't really know. And then when that first inspection comes along and they fail it, they're like, oh crap, we didn't do the chrome. So then from that day on, nobody steps on the chrome, so you step over it. I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't have like screwed up the first day at BMT because you didn't know that little piece of information, but I wanted to add that in the video because I'm talking about freaking BMT dorms. That's really important. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, peace.